It's the 5th of January. Do you know where your wise men are? It's that time of year again. It's that time of year again. Epiphany. My goodness. And for the sixth year in a row, here, here we, we are. are. Makeup for Harvest 6. Twelfth night edition. Oh, baby. <laughs> if music be the food of love, play on. But if makeup be the thing you put on your face, let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, reveal. Oh, no. Reveal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do it. We're making a start. We're making a start. I have my giant makeup bag that I made. Um, <laughs> because I thought I was gonna be touring the autumn. I did not end up touring. Step one is to take your rollers out. This year I did, uh, because I knew I was gonna do three performances and I didn't wanna have to reset after every single one, I just um, used the small ones. So I'm gonna take all of those out and I just did them in like big, big clumps once my hair was dry enough. So you get the nice big curls, but they're also a tight curl, but they're like together a lot more than they would be normally. So the basic pattern for this set is the top rows go back and then the side rows go down. So they go up and down. And last one. He's peasy. Whenever I do that now, whenever I just like shake up my head, I think of the, you know, like the, the Beyonce, like, <laughs> I do that. I do that every single time. Um, I'm slowly going to get warmer. So I'm slowly going to remove layers. Bow, bow, bow. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't need this. Where is a nice clean space to put that? I don't need this. <laughs> zoopa, zoopa, zoo. So I'm now gonna just, um, I'm now gonna brush out my hair. Um, I find if I give it a good brush out and then do my makeup and then return and do like a little bit more of a taming situation once it's all been kind of left to hang for a little bit, it usually responds really well. But again, this is like such easy hair to do because I knew I was gonna do it multiple times that it's actually pretty, pretty self-doing. Self does it, it self does it, you know? It does it itself. Start from the bottom, work your way up. All right, step one done. Let's start with a little bit of primer, a little bit of primer. I still didn't get through this primer done that I'm doing this the pore filler that I kind of bought as like a little like oh I should um should should get some pores because what I was noticing was that all of my makeup from act one would just end up in my pores during act during the interval and then I'd have to be like well here we are all right eyebrows and then eyes this is like really quick um, this is so quick that you could do it at home if you wanted to. You probably won't. I know you. Here we go. I got this little, um, glue to glue my eyebrows up a little bit. Give them a little, a little bit of that. This pencil that I use every year. I'm, I'm slowly getting through it. You know, I'm slowly getting through it. And then I'm never, I'm never going to finish that. I'm never going to, it's in two pieces. But I just go through these so slowly that it seems such a such a shame to throw things out before you're like, you know, good and good and done. I thought we are get we are getting there. We are getting there slowly but surely, and I will get rid of it. I rewatched one of these from a couple years ago, and I was like, oh, I still have all of that makeup. That's probably not not great. Um. Anyway, this is a, a palette my friend got me for my birthday. Um. I did so when I thought I was going to be touring. Um, I did buy a teeny tiny palette and I used it for the first night and um, I just said, you know what, never again. I can't do that. This one, this one, and then maybe a few of the darker colors towards the out. It's just, a, we're just doing a nat, like a, like a, like a classic smoky eye situation. You know, it's not, 
we're not reinventing the wheel with this one. I think that's the most important thing about the show is that it was kind of just like, oh yeah, we're just doing Christmas things. Like it's, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be easy. It's also gonna be quick to do. All right, are we good? Are we good yet? Mm. Yeah, we're good. So the unusual thing about this makeup is that there is no eyeshadow. There's like, it, that's, that's it. You just scoop and then you put a liner on and then you call it a day. And then during act two, we come back up and we change the shade on the lid, which I think is really fun and really like an incredibly subtle change that I don't think was noticed in the space because it was so dark. Um, The terrifying silence of a woman just trying to get by. Great. Easy peasy. For the show, I was bringing it out a little bit more, um, but I'm not doing that today. I'm not, I'm not doing that today. I'm gonna take uh, this teeny tiny brush and just add a little bit more, um, kind of just a little bit of shadow to the lower lash line, just to balance it a little bit more. A little bit of that, a little bit of this. Great, curling my lashes, putting on some lash. Mascara, that's what they call it. This is some um, mascara I found at B&M. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll do that, I'll do that. And I'll tell you something, hasn't let me down. Not yet, at least. Face, I'm taking my studio fix, taking my sponge. Put the makeup on your face. All right, foundation is on. I have this very, very light concealer that I love to use. Um, that's a lie, I think it's fine to use. It's fine to use. Blend it out. I don't know why I've done my chin. Okay. What's next? Uh, blush, blush is next. I got this teeny tiny blush, this teeny tiny blush, and it's a liquid blush, and um, it can sometimes go a little bit wild. You just want like a good dab of it. On the cheekbones, and then spongy, spongy, spongy it out. Look at that, so subtle you can't even see it. I'm gonna go back in. All right, now we contour. Taking this, taking this. Side of the nose, side of the thing. Um, I think my favorite thing about the show in doing makeup every night for it was that it was incredibly dark in that room. Uh, so, um, you know, I just, I just sort of did my best. Um, and by best, I mean quickest. Under the chin. Do that. Beautiful. And then I'm going in with this highlighter again. And none, none of this makeup is new. None of this makeup is new or different. But the project was new and different, so that was great. Between the eyes. Stunning. Moving on to lashes, and then we'll do lips, and then act one starts. Um, this makeup is so quick. So for the show itself, I was using the Benefit um, Real False Lashes Invisible Lash Glue. It dries so slowly. It dries so slowly that at one point, like after night one, I just started doing my lashes. I just like put the glue on them the minute I started doing my face. And then by the time I was ready to do lashes, it would be, it would be ready. And so I just, yeah, that was the, that was the, that was what, that was what I did. Uh, for today, I'm gonna be using the incredibly cheap glue that comes with the lashes that I bought, which are not good lashes. 
These are incredibly cheap, but unfortunately, until I can get back onto the set of BBC's Casualty to steal another three boxes of lashes, this is what we're stuck with. This is what we're, this is what we're, um, this is what we're stuck with. One thing that I do, I don't know if you do this in your life, but I take a little, I take a little, a little, sec, little, little splash of glue and I put it on my, one of my fingernails so that I can test it when I think, when I think the glue is going to be tacky enough to put on my face. So that is a hot tip from me to you. Wish me luck. Oh, that's the wrong lash. I think the secret to putting on a lash is um, don't overthink it. Like I've done. Not a thought has gone through my little mind. And here we are. Perfect lashes. Yeah, perfect enough. And here we are, an unmitigated failure. Um, well, so I've put on my little costume. The hair is so easy to do because it's just a claw clip and I just take the top section, clip it back. Dead simple, that doesn't move. I take my little headband, put it on like a headband. Make sure my fringe is nicely splayed. For the lips, I am using this lip pencil and then I'm also using a little like test, tester, <laughs> a teeny tiny tester thing um, of the color um, Burr Burning Love 983 from MAC. And it's just this teeny tiny, teeny tiny pot that I got a while ago and never opened. And it's a really fun dark red that I just apply with the brush end. Scoop. And then what I would do once I've done that is blot it a little bit. And then take a little bit of lip gloss and stick it over the top. I love a lip gloss over a lipstick. That's why all of my lip glosses are that color. Anyway, so that's act one. That's act one. And then I'd go and start the show. Oh, I wanted to talk about the costumes while we're here. This is a dress that I made in 2020 for my Christmas little video that I did in 2020 with the wonderful Rianne Dixon. And then in 2021, I cut it up and redid the bodice for my Christmas party. And then this year I was like, oh, I should, I should do it again because it's a red dress, it's a red dress. And then I um, saw that in Meet Me in St. Louis, Judy Garland wears a red dress. Well, she's in a red velvet dress with these big puff sleeves. And so I took out kind of a triangle of the back of the dress skirt and I put it as sleeves. And then I just bedazzled it. I just like bedazzled the crap out of it. And then um, these were going around, but then I just sort of let them dangle because I think it's fun to have movement. It's fun to have movement. Um, and then for the train, I did some like gathering. So I kind of was in dress rehearsals and the dress itself was kind of inhibiting my ability to play. So I did a lot of gathering where I would take little chunks of the skirt and kind of squoosh them together at different levels all the way around the skirt. And it just meant that it would stay open when I was playing and it wouldn't get in the way. And I think, um, I think it, it looks really gorgeous. It looks like a pair of curtains, which I think is, is kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that is what the, what the kind of vague inspiration for the first act costume was. <laughs> Thank you. 
I do a costume change. Thank you. All right, so we've done act one. And so now we have to change a couple of things for act two and the act two costume. So the first thing is to take off the lipstick, replace it with a different lipstick, which I did. And then I thought, you know what? It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Done. And then I'm gonna go back in with this gloss. And then I'm gonna take this palette and there's like a beautiful blue in this palette that I'm gonna put on the lid. Easy peasy. So for a couple of the performances, I went in with a setting spray on the brush just to bring out the color. And then a, some of the performances I just kind of went in with the brush. Some performances I just went in with my hands because I have to get around a, a lash here. And it's quite tricky getting around a lash. There we go. So I would do that all after I had put a canvas bag over my head and then gotten into the next costume, which is what I'm gonna do now. <sighs> this is the second act costume, which is um, just essentially the, um, the dresses that they wear in the sisters number of White Christmas. Um, I'm just gonna take my hair, pin it back up again. I think the reason I was so hesitant to do anything particularly major with the hair, it, like even to the extent of pinning it, is because I would have to get like this over my neck, over my head every single time. Um, and then I used this fun little necklace that I got off eBay for my birthday. Um, this dress is the dress that I made for my birthday um, that I then shortened and added a um, like a mesh overlay that I just sewed onto the waist. Um, and then I am gonna add these little clip-on earrings that I got from the pumping station down on Penarth Road, which is where I got all of the fabric to make this birthday dress to begin with. Um, these earrings were 75p, 75p. And then of course the fan, and then of course the fan. I love this fan. Um, I did um, excess fabric from from the outside for the, f so it matches the little costume. Um, and then I had some like lying, some sequins that I took off a dress that was falling apart. And um, and then I just did bedazzling all up and down the um, the staves of, of this fan. And then just a few little, few little small ones in the thing. But that is essentially, that's the, that's the second act costume. And then there were also matching shoes but I don't want to show those because I didn't do them very well. Other things that people noted on were uh, the bedazzled kazoo for the show, which I am, um, I want to say proud of, but I, I feel like, um, you know, you can't not be proud of something so beautiful. A bedazzled kazoo, incredible, incredible. 10, 10 out of 10 for that idea. And then I also bedazzled my water bottle. I just wanted there to be like really silly elements that that would go with the show, but also would be kind of usable in a... Th that would go with the show, but also be usable further than the show. Um, this feather fan is probably not one of those things, but a bedazzled kazoo is one. If I do, the next project is blue, so, ooh, <laughs> you know, tune back in for that. Anyway, that is Makeup for Harpist 6. Um, quick quick these are so quick now especially because i knew i had to do it three times i knew i was gonna have like a lot of other things to think about during the time when i was performing so i kind of knew like okay i would want to be able to just get in change the makeup in the interval and then like get back out there um and so yeah that's that's essentially it there's no underpainting there's no there's nothing particularly clever or fun about this it's just putting makeup on your face but I think I did an okay job. There's no powder this year, there's no setting because things move around too much. And it was also in an incredibly short show. Like it was, it was an hour of me on stage. So like nothing really needed to last all night or anything like that. So that was a large part of the makeup decisions to not bake or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Anyway, um, I'll see you next year for Makeup for Harvest 7. 
And if not, oh wait, no, I needed to plug. You can watch Ho Ho Hickman, A Christmas Extravaganza on YouTube, or you can listen to Hyperlocal Celebrity. There was a podcast about that. There's also a podcast about what I did last year, if you would like that. Um, that's all Hyperlocal Celebrity. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Who knows? Who knows when I'll be performing again? <laughs> um, not me, at least. Anyway, goodbye, everyone.